So Steinbeck's best friend in the world is over here again today, and that's Gavin. Gavin, do you want to say hi? No. Do you want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> Gavin, come on up. Come on. Okay. This is <laughs> this is what it's like when we watch Gavin. Let's talk about the most exciting lens coming out of China so far this year. So so I do not have one of these yet. I do see myself getting one of these to test them out and do a review on, because this is a fascinating little lens. The, uh, the link to Sony Alpha Rumors uh, is in the, the video description, and it is Venus Optics announces the new Mini FF2 85mm f5.6 to one FE lens. Uh, no byline on this article. So basically, um, Venus is releasing a two, a two to one magnification, 85 millimeter f5.6 macro lens. There's a rendering of the lens on a Sony camera. It makes it look like the lens is a little bit bigger than I suspect it's actually gonna be. And then there's a sample image that makes it look like it's gonna be a pretty decent performer. All right, so here's the reason this is the most exciting new lens to come out of China now. So as anyone who watches the Chinese lens scene knows, there are a lot of new lenses being pumped out of China all the time from all of these different brands, many of which appear to be made by the same few facilities or companies and then branded as their own thing. But, um, and most of them are equivalent or not all that exciting. They're variations on a theme, which is ultra fast. This one is not. This is an f5.6 85mm high magnification macro lens. And the reason it's exciting is because it shows that a company in China, Venus, and this I think more so than the others, is that um, they really understand the trajectory of the mirrorless camera future. And what I mean by that is back in the rangefinder days of film in the 30s and 50s, lenses didn't have to be f1 point anything. In fact, many rangefinder lenses were f35 to f56 or f45. 35 was considered a fast rangefinder lens. A big part of that is because using an f1 anything on a rangefinder is very hard because that rangefinder has to be so perfectly calibrated that in order to shoot wide open that it's, it's actually functionally impossible to really get something in focus with a rangefinder on a super fast lens, at least a traditional film rangefinder, because calibrations on those were, were very hard to achieve in a precise enough way to, to have that work. There are, of course, some exceptions which are very fast rangefinder lenses, like a Canon 50mm f095, I think that was for rangefinders, uh, or a 1.2, I forget for sure. Anyway, I am far from an expert on vintage rangefinder lenses. Uh, at least the, all the different makes and models. Back to this one. So the reason that I say that this is super exciting is because, like it or not, the future of digital cameras is going to be mirrorless. And honestly, I think that's a pretty good thing. Personally, I love shooting with a DSLR and having an optical viewfinder. Um, and one of those paired with a, like the, like the Pentax K1, with an articulating lot screen that can do live view, it's perfect. That's great. Um, but uh, mirrorless is eventually going to be the way that everybody with the possible exception of Pentax goes, and we already know that because it's happened. With mirrorless, lenses don't have to be as fast. Back in the, just like back in the rangefinder days, you could have a slower lens that focused on things like image quality, image sharpness, color transmission, things like that. Uh, contrast, a big one and giving really, really high quality images because you can do that more easily and more effectively at slower apertures. So here Venus has really embraced that aesthetic. 85 millimeters f5.6 wide open. Now the reason this is great for macro shooters is that macro shooters who have f2.8 lenses, they're not using them at f2.8. It shouldn't be anyway. They're usually using them around f8 to f11. 
So having f5-6 as a stop faster than f8 gives you the ability to do some fine focus. You still, with a macro lens, have a very shallow depth of field, so you can get really fine focus. And then you can stop it down to anywhere from f8 to f16 and get better depth of field control. It does stop down to f22, which, I mean, honestly, I, I would have tried to push this to f32 because a lot of the traditional macro lenses went that small for, again, depth of field control. But honestly, at f32, the diffraction softness probably would have outweighed the benefits of the depth of field, given that most of the people who are gonna use this are probably going to be doing image focus stacking anyway for stationary objects. So I think that the specs on this are really good and really promising, and the lens design is also very interesting. Uh, three of the elements are extra low dispersion glass, the other, the rest of them, it doesn't say what they are or aren't. But uh, that's, those three elements should do quite a lot for controlling things like chromatic aberration and um, uh, flaring and, thing, and so forth. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be a pretty darn small lens. It's going to have a 53 millimeter diameter and a 78 millimeter overall length that is from the front of the camera. Does, the 78 millimeters does not include the mounting flange. So um, I'm gonna guess that's probably gonna use a 49 millimeter filter thread or lens cap, but it doesn't say. So that's significantly smaller than their 100 millimeter F2.8 macro, which is uh, 72 millimeters by 125. Also, when we're talking about mirrorless cameras, they're generally pretty small, right? Especially the entry-level ones. And having a smaller macro lens to put onto a smaller, lighter camera is just going to pair well. So I'm very excited. I am really looking forward to getting this lens at some point and trying it out because uh, I think this is a direction that a lot of macro shooters who use mirrorless want to see the macro lens market going in. And I think it's a really good... Uh, demonstration of the of Venus's understanding of what uh, mirrorless lenses can be or mirrorless cameras can and should be used for and how to really capitalize on on their built-in abilities plus focusing on a, a lens that really does very well with in terms of image quality and not worrying about things like you know how big a slab of glass and how big of an aperture can we put on the front of it is a really good trajectory to go on. So anyway, very exciting lens, and uh, just just wanted to uh, share my excitement about that because it has uh, much bigger, much bigger ramifications for the trajectory of the Chinese lens market than I think is instantly apparent. Have a good day, everyone. I'm gonna go take care of two dogs who are being very barky and enjoying playing. I'll see you in the next cameras and coffee. Right, pups? Okay. <laughs>